Hello, welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to talk about while loops. While loops are really important in terms of allowing us to do the same task repetitively as opposed to putting in the code over and over and over again. So we're going to go through some of the syntax, look at some examples we could possibly do in our uh, Coding Circus Sandbox in Vizard. So let's dive right in with a simple example. Make this full screen so you can see it. There we go. Lovely. So I'm going to start with a variable, i, just the throwaway variable, i equals 1. And the first loop we're going to look at is the while loop. It starts with the word while. And it states while a particular condition is true. So let's say while i is less than 6. Now we use the colon to indicate the beginning of the while loop block. And then we indent, just like we did with our conditionals. And anything that is indented underneath this while loop will be part of the while loop. So I'm going to print i. And then I have to change i, otherwise i is always going to stay 1. So we're going to increment i, and I'm going to use our unary operator, plus equals 1. So that's going to add 1 to i every time. Remember, that's the same as doing i equals i plus 1. I could, I could have done this equals i plus 1 as well, but instead I decided to use the unary operator because that's more um, syntax appropriate when we're coding. I'm going to run this, and we can watch in our loop. We get printed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 onto the screen. So what's really happening here is i starts out as 1, and then the computer tests. It says, is 1 less than 6? If it's not, if it is, then go down and execute the commands that are within this block. Then go back up again and test i again. Since we're incrementing i each time, it's going to start as 1, then do 2, then do 3, then do 4, then do 5. On the fifth try, i will become 6. In fact, if we go at the end of this, after we're done the loop, and we print i one more time, We'll, we will see that i does have the value of 6. Since 6 is not less than 6, it's equal to 6, our loop will stop, and we will only print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from within the loop. So that is a basic while loop. Now notice the last print statement that I had did not repeat with the other print statements, and that's because it was not indented and in the same block as the while loop. Let's take a look, another example with a different kind of statement involved, and we're going to add in our conditionals. So again, we're starting with i is equal to 1. We're going to continue our test where we say i is less than 6. And our colon marks the beginning of our block for our while loop. We're going to print i just like we did before. And we're going to increment i at the bottom of the loop like we did before. The only difference is this time is I've added a conditional inside my while loop. Now, the conditional is going to test to see if i equals Three. Then we have our colon marking the beginning of our statements that occur if the condition is true. Then we have this statement here called break. Break stops the execution of any currently iterating loop. And we'll just stop it and we'll go on to the next line, which in this case there's nothing. But the next line, I'm just going to put a print here print done loop. So it will break right here and jump down to line 7, which is not inside the while loop block, and print done loop. Let's clear our iterations panel, interactions panel, and let's see this run. So it prints 1, 2, 3, 
it never gets all the way up to six because of this break here. This break stops the loop. So a good example of this might be uh, in your wizard code, you might have um, some beach balls that are uh, appearing on the screen. And you might say, hey, as soon as somebody grabs a beach ball, stop making beach balls. So that would break the loop. There's also a continue statement. This one's a little different. So in this case, we're going to say while um, i is equal to zero, I'm just starting at zero this time, uh, i is less than six, same conditional, and then we start our, our, our block. And we're going to say if, uh, we're going to increment i, and we're going to say if i is equal to three, we're going to continue. And what that means is we can, it stops the current iteration and then it kind of skips over it. So it doesn't break totally out of the loop. What it does, it says, okay, if i is equal to three, then don't do line six. Skip that line and go back up to the top of the loop. So in effect, what's going to happen here is it's going to skip printing the number three on the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me clear my screen. And you can see it does one, it does two, but because i is equal to three, we're essentially saying, hey, let's continue back up to the top of the loop. Doesn't matter what else happens here. And then continue with the rest of the loop like normal. So we skip three essentially, and then print four, five, and six on the screen. That's a really kind of interesting statement. I've only seen it inside of Python. I haven't seen it inside of other languages. Now we can also use an else statement, which is also interesting because again, I haven't seen this inside of other languages other than Python. And what this does, it's going to say, okay, we're going to run this loop. And while i is less than six, print i and increment i by one. When we're done the loop, in other words, i is no longer less than six, print this statement. Now, this has the same effect as what we did before, where we use the print statement outside the loop. It's effectively the same thing. So let's see the two different results. So it says one, two, three, four, five, and i is no longer less than six. We could then also do the same effect, like I said, just taking the print statement out of the loop and get exactly the same result on the screen. So you'll, one of the things we're learning in this process is that there are multiple different ways of running the same kind of code, of getting to the same goal. Now, one last thing in here, well, before we get to diving into our 3D world, suppose, for example, you forgot to put in line four. What's going to happen here is i is never going to increment. So i will never get um, bigger than six, and this loop will continue forever and ever and ever. So if I run this, I'm going to get stuck in what's called um, an infinite loop. And you can see it's just printing one on the screen forever and ever and ever. The question is, what do I do now? How do I end this? Well, you could close the wizard program completely. That would work. Another thing you could do is you see this arrow right here. Um, you could try rerunning it, but then that's only going to kind of get you back into the same um, issue again. Uh, what we really want to do is reset this interactive panel. We actually want to shut this down so it doesn't keep running. It's pretty simple to get it to stop. You go up to here to where it says script, and there's a button here that says stop. Uh, it's a shift F5 if you want to use a shortcut, but you click on stop, and then all of a sudden it's going to give you this message shutting down script. Uh, we could terminate it forcibly to force it to shut down if we want, which is fine, so we're going to terminate it. And you can see now we get control of the computer again, and we can put in the command that we want, 
and actually get it to run properly. And we can see now it is running properly and printing the numbers like we had asked them to do. So our next step is to jump into our 3D world and see what we can do there. So I'm going to switch screens here. Uh, here is my video sandbox. This is where I kind of do some work with my 3D world. And you might remember some of these uh, commands that we had in our last lesson where we were talking about adding in our scene and adding in our beach ball using the vids.addchild and we're getting it right from the position, uh, right from the file and putting in the position of two, one, zero with a scale of one, one, one. Okay. Now I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna use something that's a little bit more sophisticated um, than just I. So my variable is gonna be called ball count. Keep track of the number of uh, beach balls that I put on the program. I'm gonna put my while loop and I'm gonna say while ball count is less than six, I'm going to add in a, another beach ball, but with one difference. I'm gonna add it in so that way the position is the ball count. So I'm gonna do it two ball count comma zero, which is effectively gonna put um, the beach balls across the screen in a line. And then it's gonna increment the ball count. And remember we saw that's really important. If you don't, you're gonna end up in an infinite loop, which we have to go ahead and stop. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So when we run this, may take a minute because we're loading a lot. There we go. So we can see what I have created now. Let me back up a little bit. Oh, wrong direction. Is a stack of beach balls. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we can see them placed on the screen based upon the ball count vertically. That would be the number zero ball. And that'd be the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. And of course we could place them um, horizontally if we just moved where ball count was. So if we could see over here, ball count here is dictating the uh, vertical scale, but we could also put ball count here and dictate the horizontal scale and have it go forwards and backwards on our screen. Uh, we could even make a grid. Uh, we'll talk later on how to do a loop within a loop when we get the for loops. One little note here. If you're having trouble with the scene taking a really long time to load, that could be because the gallery is a pretty big scene. If you want to speed this up and you want to see uh, more of the beach balls in action and have this happen a little bit faster, what we can do is comment out this line where we add in the environment. And then when we run it, we're, what we're really going to do is we're just going to add the balls. So when I run this, we'll see this run significantly faster because it's just loading the beach balls onto the screen. And there's very little to render. Now you'll, you'll have to look around for them a little bit. There they are. And I can see the beach balls are still stacked on the screen for me. It's just there's no other environment in there uh, that I have to wait for it to load. So we might do some experiments when we do more with these for loops in these uh, environments. Uh, or in a, we'll pick a different scene that's a little less complex because the more complex the scene, the more things for it to render and that takes it longer to show up on your screen. So if it took a really long time uh, and it's not seemed to be working, be patient, maybe take out that one line and see how much faster it goes. But that is all I have for you today. I will see you next time.